Welcome to Catch the Craze. We are the heart of the industry. I'm so crazy. You're so crazy. Crazy. Who's the craziest? I'm so crazy. You're so crazy. Crazy. Who's the craziest? I'm so crazy. You're so crazy. Crazy. Who's the craziest? I'm so crazy. You're so crazy. This episode of Cast the Craze is sponsored by Daystar Studios, www.daystar-studios.com. Welcome to Cast the Craze Podcast Audio Mix. I am your host with the most, I am the crazy man, Vera, along with... Jonathan the Psycho Syfax, and, and we have a new great guest. Yes, indeedy. Hello, I'm Michelle St. Martin. They have to think of a nickname for me, so yes, you can go yes. with that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so as this progresses, I'm going to put the challenge out to you guys, the listeners, you know, and put it on the forum. And, you know, we'll put, you know, what do you think her nickname should be? Because, you know, we have the dreamer, Medina. We have the psycho Syfax, and his name does fit him. And we have, you know, the crazy man, me. And, you know, Annie Bow, the animal royal, who's the, you know, he's a ghost. Once in a while, he'll pop up. You know, we're sitting here, and, this, and next thing you know, he appears. So, what do you think the name, you know, would uh, the new nickname should be for Michelle, who's our newest co-host? Um, that's going to be a challenge. But you'll get a sense of what it should be because, you know, hearing her speak. So, Michelle, what's going down? Uh, God, this is all new to me. It's really <laughs> wild. So, uh... I'm here to feed off you guys, and uh, we'll see what happens, and we'll take it from there. Uh, so if I'm a little quiet girl today, that won't really last, <laughs> because, you know, uh, I'll get a feel for you guys, and, uh, you know, I'll get used to everything and everybody, and, uh, you know, we'll just see what happens, and just go with the flow. So, today on the show, we have... Um, a guest from Septicon Studios, and Jonathan hit my notes. His name is Nick, and he heads the company for Septicon. And they, they I guess the concept behind them is almost like an image. They're, they're creating a publishing house for independents to go to, and they will publish their works if they deem it right for their image and their company, and if it's marketable. So um, we had the pleasure of, of speaking with um, Nick, who is the founder, co-founder, because there are partners in that organization, and, and you'll hear it um, as as the show progresses, but there's certain questions that I've asked and that I'm still, you know, I, I've always asked publishers, um, and some, somehow some shape or another publishers dodge certain questions. Um, and I don't think that, um, I don't know, you'll get a feel for the, the conversation. I don't know if, um, maybe I didn't elaborate enough or what the case was, or maybe I caught, um, you know, Nick off guard, you know, but there are certain questions and that I will ask. And I guess the audience wants to ask, um, and or expect from an independent publisher wanting to come out and create a book, and that's what I want to talk about today. Um, as a segue into that show is why become an independent publisher, you know? And I'm going to get your opinions, uh, you know, why even take the chance, considering that you know the the market is over flooded um, and it's so diluted right now. There's just so much competition, and um, and everybody and their mothers are creating comic books today with today's technology. Um, why even go that route, number one? And what are the su success rates? I mean, what? F forget the fact that we are publishers or creators ourselves. As a spectator, as a fan, what are the, what's the impression of a newcomer coming out of nowhere? Uh, and wait, I do want to say that if there's any questions that the listeners want to ask, we have the forum avail available to ask the questions that we might miss. So if you want to find something out from one of our guests, Go in the forum, and then we will try to get that answer for you, even beyond the forum, if the guest doesn't respond to the right. To and, the post. Right, and we encourage all guests of Cast the Craze to oh. join the forum. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> Michelle's done. What's going on? Um, this she's a newbie. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta. Yeah, I forgot to turn off my phone. <laughs> That's okay. So, she, That's she, she, oh Lord. Okay. So dynamic, so, <laughs> you're really getting calls in. Like, before we, even do we got callers. <laughs> we got callers. Right. Um, Not yes. to get off the subject. Call this number if you want to call in. <laughs> <laughs> you want to call in. Michelle's number is. Uh, <laughs> Jeez Louise. All right. Sorry. But yeah. Go ahead. 
Okay. Go to the forum. Join the forum. If you are a, you were a guest on Cast the Craze, go to the forum because there might be people listening that want to ask specific questions. Or may, you know, maybe we might have missed a, a, a question and they, you know, and they have that and they want to ask you directly. Um, so, it, it's, I'm going to shoot it out. The idea of the what's the perception of an independent independent publisher coming into the market today? Well, like you said, it's saturated now. Um, everybody wants a piece of the pie because I think really, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble or this or not, but I think they're really sick of the mainstream right now. All the feedback that I'm getting from different forums and groups that I'm in, they're sick of the big two. Right. They're sick of the subject matter. They're tired. Um, you know, they feel like they've been duped. Um, they, you know, a lot of these people... A lot of these consumers have had a pull list, you know, that they get like, I don't know. I mean, some some of these guys get like, or used to get like 20 titles, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like, or more. A week, like stacks of books. And now they're like, I'm just getting like one or two titles now. Right. Because they're, they're, they're kind of, it's played. Everything's played. Right. And I would assume that a person would want to be a, a creator or a publisher or otherwise would want to be an independent publisher to push the envelope a little bit. You know, I mean, call me naive, but that's what I'm getting. But now everything's so saturated that there's some sort of backlash happening. So Let's play both sides of the fence. Mm. Because, I mean, it is a common statement. Mm -hmm. The big two. Mm. It is a common statement. Mm. But is that becoming the excuse? Mm. Is that just... Be is I can understand it in the beginning. I can understand it when there was a revolution. Yeah. You know, which is you know, with the the image comic revolution and and, and uh, all these the, the companies that rose in the early nineties, mm -hmm. Valiant and all of them. But is this becoming the normal statement for anybody who hasn't done the research, hasn't done the legwork, who doesn't understand the industry, doesn't understand the impacts of of what they're doing and the product and 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 how it direct uh, the the effects or what the consumer wants. You know, doesn't understand. They just want to just put out something, because I want to. I want to be mm, opposed to the big two. Is that just becoming, you know, the the norm? Oh, I'm gonna, you know, everybody's, you know, forget about Marvel and DC. You know, I for one was a big Marvel comic book collector. Uh -huh. I can't tell you why I chose the other route. I just okay. know that when Image came out, I followed Todd McFarlane. I mm -hmm. followed Jim Lee. I followed Mark Silvestri and, and, and Rob Liefeld, their artwork. Right. Mm. And because of speaking as an artist. And right. so, which is why I followed them to Image. Right. I still continue to pick up the books that I liked. I, I was a big Spider-Man fan. Mm -hmm. But over the years, I stopped collecting Marvel completely. Once in a while, I'll see a book that catches my eye. But I've stood on the independent route. Mm -hmm. and, and I've just been there ever since, you know, the early 90s. Um, my 90% of my collection is independent. But that's me, you know. Um, the reason why I'm I'm publishing not because of the big two, not because of anybody, is because I want to be my own businessman. Okay. I want to run my own company. I want to go by my own timeline. I want to I want to see things through and walk, branch into other mediums. But I know it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So I'm not using the big two as an excuse. I'm right. using my experience of what I want. But when I go to conventions or when I hear when I'm at the table. And you have all these these aspiring creators come up to the table. Well, you know, there's just there's, there's too much time in it. I mean, Marvel and DC and blah, 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 you know. Yeah. I think that's just because yeah. it's, it's it's just a statement. Just like, you know, just do it, you know, in a Nike. You know, yeah. everybody, everybody hears it enough, they start saying it. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, so I think they've is. heard it, you know, and that's the, that's the excuse that's embedded in their heads. Right. But the big two, they have a they have a, a, a recipe for what works for them. Right. They've they've have stability. They have growth. They have consistency. Right. They have longevity. Right. They've built something. Right. They've done it from the ground floor up. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Right. Well, to I'll, stay consistent. I mean, I do have to agree with what you're saying. The only thing that I do say is, I don't think it's just a matter of they have a recipe for what works for themselves. They have a recipe that built an industry. See, I think it's different when you have a recipe, and it works for that niche. But when you build an industry, you pretty much are the fathers that laid the groundwork, right. no matter what. Right. I mean, it's like if you're writing, you can't help but steal from Shakespeare because he is the father. And Shakespeare couldn't help from steal from the Greeks. The same thing. There's nothing new under the sun once you come 
after Marvel and DC because they are the industry. But you can try to press something that is a, a different variation of what they per, what they perfected. And that I agree with what you're saying is people are kind of like, well, I'm not going to touch that because Marvel already oh, yeah, did it, so let me leave it alone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. recipe doesn't mean a, a, a specific target market. Doesn't it, it means they understand how to put something together and expand on it. That's what I yeah, mean. Yeah, exactly. But the same thing. They're not. They're not any different from any other company. They had their troubles and they they went bankrupt in Chapter Eleven, and and here comes another you know company and then new top dogs and new senior level VPs, and they turned it around. They said Marvel couldn't make a movie for the life of them for years. Yeah, that's true. That movie <laughs> true. they yeah. they Bomb were they bad. were known yeah. as the, the the straight to DVD or burn it movie makers. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was just like you picked it up and you just you you were. Just disgusted with the kind of content they would put together. Punisher, oh, <laughs> Punisher, like, the Fantastic oh. Four. Did you see the, te- the original, oh. the original Fantastic Four, yes, where did. they had a guy in a sponge costume as I the thing? I thought the Fantastic Four was bad. A lot of people like that. I it was, that was no, not the new Fantastic Four, no, right? No, no, the, I'm talking the, about. The, the, we're going back. I thought both was bad. You, know, you, you seen the first one? I saw the first one and I thought this one was Liar. bad too. I did not um, like this one. Uh, but, it, but what I'm saying is now here comes a new group of, of, of senior level executives and they, they have an understanding for the global market. And they understand, hey, you want to make a movie? Number one, you, you own you Marvel owns all these properties, but yet they have all these studios that have four-year contracts, five-year contracts to produce a Fantastic Four, but you can never do an Avengers Fantastic Four crossover. You know, they have That's they have point. Captain America, yeah, you point. know, like, I don't know the names of the studios, but like, say, for instance, Paramount owns Captain America, and they own the rights to make the, the, the film Captain America. No one else can touch it, but he's part of the Avengers. That means you can't make an Avengers movie. The Hulk, ah. some other studio, yeah, yeah, Fox right. owns ah. the Hulk. Right. He's part of the Avengers, but you cannot make an Avengers movie because the studios, and no one wants to, to, to share earnings. Ah. So, so they, they came up, five movies, so, so what they did was they said, you know what, let's create Marvel Media. And now they... They they own all their content and they can create all their movies. They can do as many crossovers as they want, and they can do it the way they want it. And they have the knowledge and know how to do it. So they've grown over the years. So I don't, fo- I, I can't say Marvel, you know, stocks on Marvel. Marvel's what paved the way for everybody. Yeah, DC's crazy. what paved yeah, the way for everybody. The big yeah. two, you know, they 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 are the 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 World Trade Center in yes. comics. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, yeah. Image tried, you know. Um, to be the, the 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 new company, I mean, Image is there, has been there, has longevity, but they just produce a lot of, you know, release a lot of independence, and they give you an opportunity to, to try, you know. Mm-hmm. But there is no other Marvel or DC cross generation try to be the 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 the, 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 the Great White Hope by offering four one k and stock options mm-hmm. and medical benefits and all this stuff, whatever. Right. The guy doesn't they know how to manage money, and uh, so what happened was then they went under. You know, but now you have all these independents. Are you really, you know, when you say I studied the market and you can't answer me specifically, what did you, what did you study? You know, what, you know, did you take any courses on finance? Did you take any courses on business or marketing? Who's handling this? What's, what are you doing there? You know, you know, what your, your contract agreements, you know, what, what are they about? Who put your contract together? All these things. If you haven't done all that legwork prior to wanting to go out and, and, and publish a book, then you're doing a disservice to yourself because what you're doing is you're hurting yourself in the industry. Because you're, you're 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 contributing to that perception that independents have a lifespan of a year to two, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And that's it. They're that's not consistent. True. They're not that's consistent. Right. They can't put up books. And this is globally. I'm talking about any independent trying to come into the market. I know, you know, as an independent publisher myself, there are things. We're, it's a learning process for us. Even though we spent three years prior mm-hmm. to launching of of, of interviewing. Mainstream publishers, interviewing independent publishers, going to lectures, forums, going to school, studying. You know, you know. George has a marketing degree. I'm a, I'm a digital media major. We I've sat down with with Brian Polito and spoke, had long conversations about what happened with chaos. I spoke with Mark Silvestri and, and and talked about what works for them. You know, we've sat there and we've done our homework. We've talked to. We look at the 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 the, the sales in in the diamond releases, and we noticed that there is no impact with the independents. You know. The sale, you know, it's like where where do they where do they stand? The one percent, two percent in sales that c- contributes to the market. Mm-hmm. Understanding that, you know, and I look at that, and I'm like, all right. My focus has to be global. It has to be bigger than just comic books. But how am I got to do that? I have to have a product that's marketable. 
that has, has heart. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got to know who my audience is. I know how to I got to know how to target them, how to reach them. That means going beyond the 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 the, the comic book market and and exposing it to a different audience. Mm-hmm. You know, not just limiting it to that. Are you as an independent publisher doing these things or are you just so excited about that you oh I just saved enough money to go and, and, and produce my books and do all this stuff. I'm going to go out in the market and sink or swim. And are you also being honest about your um, product? Like, we've had, and we've ran into this, individuals who they'll come up to us, and we're not necessarily the top stream in the independent, but I think we gained some success, and will not even come with a proposal. They'll come with an unedited spelling wrong, grammar wrong, I mean, I gotta ask them what this word is, and it's was. Wow. And I'm I'm looking at them, and I turn to Sam, and I'm like, "Does this guy seriously think we're gonna look at a 300 page script that's not even spell checked?" Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like no, but that's that, yeah, you know, that that's an uh, no, uh, uh, independent creator level. There are big independent companies or independent companies that will take that script and put it out and say, "You know what." Let's just put them out there and see see how it goes. If the, and they I already kind of set up a stumbling, which is alluding to what you say. Like they're not even not even the basics of that company is being covered for that project. No, I like don't. Simple I, I, I disagree with you. Thing. I don't know. I don't know if if any right minded individual will want to go and invest in somebody who who is just sloppy. But, you know, and you said it's yesterday been, we had you and I had a conversation that we yesterday. Saw that was published. What's well, the statement that Russell Simmons says? He says we don't dust off bums. We make we we put out stars. Right. So which means is they take somebody that's already marketable, and they make money off them. Yeah. Because exactly. they already have that magic. Exactly. So you're not going to go and take a bum as as you said it, and and try to make a diamond from it. You're not. But how many times have we seen books and in independent but that's, places that's, that we went? That's um, one person's perception. That's one person's opinion. Just because I walk into no, I'm talking about no. actual make product. I'm not talking no, about yeah, that's thing. what I'm saying. That's what, like, but that's what I'm saying. Books that independence and we'll catch spelling mistakes in the book. But that happens whatever you know. Even Marvel today has misspelling. I can pick no, up a but book. Extreme spelling. No, but what I'm saying is, forget about you know that. Yeah, okay. What might work for you won't work for me. You know what I'm saying? You might like a book. For instance, George, he doesn't like independence much. You know and. He, w- he wasn't going to pick up Invincible until I told him, pick the damn thing up, read it. And I made him read the one, my book no, no, and look at the pages and he read it. He's like, now nah, he's a fan. You know what I mean? But you don't know until you, but at the same time, I will pick up a Marvel book that he just loves and I just can't get it. And this has nothing to do with the artist or writer or just, he didn't sell it to me. Well, As an individual, I, not the masses, because it could it could be in Diamond's number one selling list. It could be it could sold it sold two hundred units in the first month, two hundred thousand units. I wasn't one of them. It just didn't work for me. There's there's something for everybody, but if you the basic fundamentals, you know the five W's. Who what where why why you learned that in, in elementary school. Oh, yeah. You know, you know the the backstory. You want you want to be able to give somebody life. So it means is each character has to have a past, present, and future. And they all have to be able to relate to each other within that story. But how many books have you seen that was published, truthfully, where you're reading it and they're not even tackling three of the five? Yeah, it's like, right. why? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but that's much like, like that, the spelling mistakes. And that falls down to the publisher. The or the in- A lot of them is all the independent creators that are trying to just put something out because they're excited and they have the money for it. Yeah. You know, that's that. But, you know, which means is, and it happened to us the first year of Crazy Comics, we rushed. I'm just at this. <laughs> we rushed Hardly. to the door. We rushed to the door. The I mean, we we, were like, we got so excited that I found the printer that was affordable. We're finally going to have the, in color. You know, and we were so excited that we forgot that, oh, there's editing involved. You know? There you go. <laughs> wow. See, that's yeah. my point. So, exactly. you know, we did everything else except we failed to realize that, oh, we're all creating, but who's editing? You know what I mean? It just, it's just like with Cross Gen. We're all doing this. Who's handling the finances? There you go. You know, who's com- you know who's communicating? So that is one of those things where you need to make certain that you've crossed all your T's, dotted all your I's, exactly. and, and you checked it. What does Santa Claus do? He's making a list and checking it twice. He's going to find out who's <laughs> naughty or not. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just basically, I'm, I'm just basically staying quiet because I'm basically learning from what you guys are saying now because I'm getting ready to put out my own thing now whether it's going to be self-published or not I don't know yet 
but this is very important stuff. As a creator, you know, you want to stay artistic, you want to be this, you don't want to think about business and numbers and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? In reality, nowadays, yes, you have to. Mm -hmm. You really have to. It's mm -hmm. very important. You know, or else you're just going to get taken and then swept under the rug. And then right. what good was all your effort? Right. Because everyone, I think that the idea is you see a lot. And I was telling John today, mm -hmm. you see a lot, a, a, a piece of property, land. There's nothing there. There's no foundation. Mm -hmm. But you say, this is where I'm going to hang my Picasso. There's no damn wall. <laughs> you know, this is what I want. And this is the color for this wall. Yeah. But you haven't thought about the schematics, the blueprints. You haven't got an architect. You haven't got, gotten with the electricians. You haven't gotten with the plumbers. You haven't looked at the, 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 the property uh, right. and see if there's anything wrong with the land, if there's any toxic. You haven't done your research. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to determine whether or not that land is suitable for that property. And then you haven't even bought the, found, the, 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 the supplies and the lumber to build that foundation together, put yeah. that foundation together. Yeah. You just, you're planning for, to put a damn picture on a wall that doesn't exist, but you haven't done your homework. And that's yeah. the problem that happens with independence. And I'm speaking as an independent. And I think we, we as independents, yeah. so we're, right. we're, we're, we're talking from experience. And yeah. I think, um, and, and it, it, I think what happens is along the lines, everybody's going to make a mistake. It doesn't matter why. I'm Marvel's sure. made its mistakes even okay. from the big companies. But but are you really, really, and I'm telling you all right now, are you really looking at yourself and saying, Did I, am I really committed to this? Or it, the first bad review, I'm going to drop it and try to create a different product. But you still haven't done your homework. Well, and you still you haven't asking, put your finance together. Or are you asking yourself, did I really, like, like you said, did I really cross all the T's? I mean, come on. If you have to look at a script ten times to know... Um, to catch a spelling mistake, is it really going to kill you to go through 10 edits? But you don't have to. Fix to. That? You don't have and to. You don't have to. You, you find somebody else to do it. Exactly. You don't even you know, have to find it's, you know, You always want a third eye. You know, it's, you know, because... Like getting a second opinion. Right. Yeah. You always yeah. want that third eye, you know, and it has to bounce exactly. from people from hand to hand. You need a forum. You need a community to give right. you feedback and to feed off of. You have a product. You're an independent creator, not a publisher. You're an independent creator. You have a product. Don't put it out. Don't give it to your friends and family. Find a yeah, forum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They'll think you're the greatest. Yeah. They'll think yeah. you're like the best thing since you know yeah. sunburn. And yeah. it's like and and make make a mock up with with no credits in it. Your name's yeah. not in it. Nothing. And go give it to people at a Starbucks and say you know I like your opinion. There's an I just you know but there's an artist that and, and, and creator and I'm looking to I might I'm look I'm interested in investing in a product. Tell me if you think it's something that you would pick up. Yeah, which is why I'm gonna do an ash can for right. what we're gonna do. It's just an eight page simple, you know, just introducing the plot and the characters and that and that. Do you like this? Do you like the artwork? Do you like the story? To me, the writing is very important. The story, without the writing and the story, you have nothing. Right. You're great. You're it. <laughs> you're, you're good. <laughs> you're good, you. you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing with everything, and I'll, and I'll give you an example. Nah, true. When we came out, we, you know, when I, you know, when we came out, we didn't have a forum. But I realized as we started, like one of the things, was, you know, the, the YMCA was an outlet for us. Mm -hmm. So I use my students as my forum, and because I knew that's the market I'm targeting for this nailing on my toilet. And as I was developing the product, I used them as my 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 my, my community. Like if they laughed, if they loved it, and they get it, and whatever, and it, and it got to the point where they were drawing it every day, and they were talking about it every day, and it was duty this and duty that, and I knew that I had something that I wasn't willing to just get to anybody that I wanted to get published, but I was going to do, I'm just going to see it through for myself. Right. Now it isn't your typical comic book; it's a kid-friendly, simple line art book, mm -hmm. but it has heart, and it, and you're guaranteed to laugh. In any book issue you pick up, and it gets funny as it goes on, and I'm not talking. To, I'm talking from the critics. I'm talking from the response from everybody else. I say, you know, and it's. I put 100 percent of my energy into this, and I know who I'm targeting. I don't, you know, it might not be something that, um, you as a as a you know unlimited fan is going to pick up, but I guarantee if you pick it up and read it, you're going to laugh. Um, you know, you might not collect it, but you might have a niece or nephew. And that's who I'm really targeting. It's an all ages book. It's for everybody, but I don't really want the kids. I want the kids of the future, which is why our slogan is grow up with us. What did your company represent? What, what, what's, what are the words that you stand by and you live by with, you know, with cast a craze, it's cast a craze. Cast a craze is basically an idea. It's catch 
the craze is the new talent. It's catch the wave of of the innovators that are coming out and the, you know the inventors and the the new things that are going to change the industry. That's the that's the craze. You know, crazy comics is you know grow up with us, create memories together. Because we want to build that foundation that Charles Schultz has with the Peanuts. You know, we grew up with Charles Schultz. Yeah. You know, we yeah. grew up with the Smurfs. You know, we grew up with, you know, and it's like we want that for with our Disney. product. For, with Disney. Yeah. Um, that's a whole different conversation. And uh, <laughs> But, you know what I'm saying? What do you stand for? I mean, you're making books to make books. You know, like people always make these statements, and I hear this for independence all the time. This book is hot. It's yeah, the it best is, thing. The industry, your, the industry needs this. <laughs> Yeah, if that's your business go, basis, you the might industry, as well go home. The industry doesn't need <laughs> my so book. It yeah, doesn't need your yeah. book. It doesn't need anybody. What it needs is consistency. What it needs is quality and consistency time and time and time again. And if you, you know, produce a book that you cannot produce on a monthly basis and you can't commit to that has the quality aspect involved and you're going to deliver on that message to that reader time and time again, don't do it. I think not you're ready. only that, but I think the only people that could really make that call that this is what the industry wants is the people who create the industry and the story. Like, unless you're Marvel or you're DC, you can't no. really necessarily, I no. think, wait, wait, you can't necessarily say that for certain, business-wise, you know, this is, this is what they want. You could create a great product and have no. confidence in your product, no. but it's, it's almost like going to a job and kind of saying, well, you know, this this is what's going to make your business a million-dollar business, and the business is already a million-dollar business. You no. know what I'm saying? I it's, disagree 100%, that, and I'll tell, you why. I'll tell you I why. I'll tell you why. You can be humble. You can put together charts, statistics, follow trends, and see a pattern of growth within the community and the industry. You can see what's what the people are targeting today, but it might not be what they want tomorrow. You have so, a general idea. So you can, yes, you can generalize, yeah. but you, you cannot make a statement and say, I know what the industry wants. Nobody does. That's what I just said. No, you don't. You didn't. Yeah. I'll okay, play this back. I'll play uh -oh. this back. Did, did, didn't I just say that? Isn't that the statement I just said? Digital sword. Say digital sword, that, you're listening, right? You're, this is your, bo this is your boy. You're listening, did digital. <laughs> so you're in the hot seat. You're in the hot seat. The, hot seat. The, the guy, you said, the people who created the industry are the only ones who can make that statement. No, they can't. You can generalize. You can. You can. Wants. You can. You, you can guesstimate, but you cannot be on point. No one can. I just said that. No, you... Okay. <laughs> Anybody listening? Uh, Sam does this every time. He uh, will say back. He'll disagree, and then he'll say back. Exactly I don't need to. It's on the air. It's recorded. You heard his statement. <laughs> you heard his statement. Write it on the form. Put him in his place, please. Listen to yourself. All right. You even said with, even I have audio. Your playback. I'm sorry. You got to play black. You just you gotta, play you black. Thing, yeah, bro. play black. All right. I, I don't remember whether you said pinpoint or. <laughs> you said the only people who can make that statement are the ones who oh, created the industry. Okay. Yeah, and you, you can't. just said the same thing basically. No, you, you, can, you, only no, you can summarize and guesstimate. You said they can make it. There's a difference. I, did, I said we can't make it. Uh, I just said we can't make it. Oh uh, damn! You backpedaling, backstrokes. Anyway. <laughs> I'm. Anyway. You know, the psycho. And you'll call me the psycho. <laughs> like right now. <laughs> what, what, what is the world doing right now? They're following. They're, they're, they're watching. They're cycling. And they're observing. They're following the trend on, on the World Wide Web. Yeah. How mainstream media is converted over to the World Wide Web with streaming media, with podcasting, with its audio video, which is why Apple created Apple TV. Because they want to be the first ones to, to capitalize on that trend. So now, if you are a streaming media content producer and you created f footage and mo film for the World Wide Web and you sub you have your product available on iTunes, if someone buys an Apple TV, they can watch your videos and listen to your podcast and watch it on their television. That's smart. They're following a trend. Yeah, that's good. They're following a trend. Will it be the norm five years from now? No, there might be something else. But right now, they're following a trend. So they're but targeting they are the it. industry because they really... Are the company I created the first no, the industry. one of the first tabletop. I'm right. saying they, if you look at it, they created the computer industry because the first the idea for podcasting was from in, a DJ, a, a, a radio host, huh? The uh, the idea for podcasting came from a radio uh, the VJ, who who came up with the concept for podcasting, sure which was something that people assumed was just going to be a fly by night idea. What happened is the independent 
that creates this concept. And it's the mainstream that capitalizes on it because yeah, the independent does not have the capital or the finance or the resources to exploit it. But if that person is smart enough and patented the idea and, and secured all the rights, they can sell that to a Google for a billion dollars or right. sell that. You know what I'm saying? So it is the, in the individual <laughs> innovators of the industry that are changing the world. But it's the, it's the mainstream corp- conglomerates and corporations that are capitalizing on it and taking it and running with it. So, you know what I'm saying? So when you get a MySpace that comes out of nowhere and now everyone's flocking and gravitating to it, now here comes a corporation and says, I'm buying this from you. Here's a check. Now you go and retire. You don't have to do jack for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things where you have an individual thinker, but you have somebody else who understands what the, the capabilities of and they what, you know what, we're going to capitalize on that. We're going to sell ad space. We're going to do this, 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 and that, and we're going to generate revenue. But now... As an independent in comics, we, we stepped away for a second. What are you doing to be different but following the rules of engagement? You know what I'm saying? Because there are rules there you that go. you have to abide by. That I agree with. You know what I'm saying? That so, I oh, I want to be different from yeah. the big two. But you have to follow the same rules they follow. Because it works. You have to understand <laughs> mathematics. You have yeah, to understand yeah, cause and effect. You have to understand your market. You have to understand the people you work with. You have to have trust. You have to legal documentation. You have to have licenses. You have to, you know, rights. and you know, It's all these things. What are you doing? Or are you just this kid that says, you know what, I don't want to go to college. Or, you know, I want to do like, this. Did and you know, I didn't even know this until I started studying, like, making comics. They actually have a mathematical format to how much margin space is on the left and right hand side of the page when they do a pay a layout. I kid you not. They actually have a mathematical layout this I did on the Marvel page. John Fun Fact. They actually wow. have a mathematical Where? layout on the page. I was reading um painting and drawing book um <laughs> Everything's math. The Will Eisner book. Right, but everything's math. And, and they actually have a mathematical layout on the page right. configuration. Even a panel configuration, right. there's a mathematical science to you're it. Gonna, you're, it well, that's a whole different conversation about... No, but I'm know, saying, like, <laughs> even the aspects that you don't think... No, but that's that's somebody to, that's somebody who's not a desktop publisher. You being a writer, not knowing that oh, yeah. when you're actually putting your, your books into page spread and getting it ready for the printer, that there are some things that you have to abide by. Yeah. There's some guidelines. You know, you have to leave a specific margin line error if you're going to have full bleeds, whether you're not going to have bleeds. You know, have a border. All these things. Everything's math. Everything we do is math. Every math is your life. But that's you know because you don't know because you're not a desktop publisher. No, I'm but saying my research. I, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to continue with this conversation. And, and we're not targeting anybody, so don't take offense to it. But um, if you do, then, then you're missing something from this conversation, and you're missing something on your end on what you're not doing to get your company prepared to, to last in this business. So if you take offense to it, you should if you messed up. <laughs> if, Sam <laughs> stays the, the views of Sam does not represent those of Crazy Comics. <laughs> this is Cast the Craze. It has nothing to do with Crazy Comics, right? Uh, Catch the craze. I'm sorry. I got to edit this guy all the time. (laughs) Uh, We'll be back after this break. Um... Do you like comics? Well, so do we. The Comic Book Novice. Each and every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 1240 WGBB and AM 1240 WGBB.com. Join comic book creator Mark Torres and his panel as they examine the current state of the comic book industry and interview professionals from the comic book field. That's the Comic Book Novice every Thursday night at 9 p.m. here on 1240 AM WGBB and AM 1240 WGBB.com. Man, this sucks. I've been to every publishing company on the floor and no one has even given my stuff a look. I knew that getting published was going to be tough, man, but this is just killer. No one will publish me unless I've already been published. I guess I could try self-publishing, but who's got that kind of money? And where am I going to find a printer? How am I going to promote the book? Not to mention distribution. Do not despair, lad. There is another way. Who are you? I am Commander Kag, and I am here to lead you into the light. You don't have to feel alone and adrift anymore. There are many others just like you, who have found their way out of the darkness. Let me show you something. Wow, it's beautiful. What is this place? 
A place where writers, artists, and animators, filmmakers, and like-minded souls can congregate freely and exchange ideas among equals. Man, this is unbelievable. Everybody working together for the greater good of all? Commander, tell me how I can become part of all this. Well, you can go to the Comic Book Artist Guild website at www.comicartguild.com. Thanks a lot, Commander. All right, we're back with Cast the Crazy Podcast Audio Mix. I am your host with the most sound, the Crazy Man, Verf. And this is Jonathan the Psycho Sarfax here. And he is psycho. So yes. we, have a very, <laughs> we have a very special guest on the show. His name is Nick Defina, and he is the founder of Septicon Studios. And... Um, He's here to be talking about his company and one of his products, Scorn, um, which is a comic book in production which is going to be released this summer. What's going on, Nick? Not much. How are you guys doing tonight? Good, good. You know, I'm glad uh, that you're on the show. How are you um, doing? And Thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much. All right. So, so, Nick, you know how we do here at Cast of Craze. We, we like to give the audience a little timeline of who you are, where you've been, what what influence you to become who you are today so why don't we take it back to your roots where were you born i was actually born in uh, toronto ontario canada hmm. i'm actually i'm a young uh, entrepreneur i'm 23 years old and Fantastic. been interested in comics for about 17 years now it's actually my mom who actually got me into uh, the comic book industry with my first comic book that dates back to Alpha Flight number seventy six. Wow. wow, you just you just got me because normally I ask what was your first comic book. Yeah, you've been listening. You had it again, wow, bro. Alpha Flight. Wow. Yeah, so back in nineteen eighty six. Nice, mm. nice. You're a young buck. So what 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 was it about that book that um, caught your attention? Well, when you're small, it's just the artwork that just grabs your attention. Right. So back in the day, Marvel was you know back in the seventies or introducing some really back in the 80s, introducing some really cool artwork. Right. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah. Well, so you grew up in the era of you were influenced. I mean, who were some of your influences, as you know, growing up? Some of the guys. Well, I yeah. would say John Buscema was one of them. Right. Jack Kirby. always loved his stuff when I was small, the golden age. Yes. Yes. So now, growing up in, in, in Canada, mm -hmm. are, are you an only child? No, I'm actually, uh, I'm a family of uh, four kids, uh, three sisters, and I'm the elder of the four. Wow. So you're the only boy? I'm the only boy. <laughs> wow. It's reversed for me with three boys and one girl. <laughs> so so were there any, uh, were your siblings artistically inclined or? None of them were really interested in the mediums that I was. It's very, we're very opposite. Right. So were there any internal influences within your family? Were there any artists or writers within your family? I actually, my cousins uh, helped me, influence me as well. They were very much into artwork. Right. So ever since they were small, they were always drawing, penciling, inking, all the mediums you can think of. And they grew up with me, and we founded something on Studios together. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So did you go to any, any art school? Did you take any writing classes? Actually, no. I just got into the medium. It was uh, all self-taught, and... I was a collector up until this day. I've always been a collector of uh, many comic books. And uh, just recently, I would say, day back about five years ago, we actually came up with the idea of Septagon Studios. Okay, so now, what possessed you to want to get into a, uh, independent publishing? There's many reasons why we got into uh, comic book publishing. and Many reasons because when you're a child, you have so many visions. And you have so many ideas, so you want to put them all under one roof. Right. You know, what a better way to start up a publishing business. But there was more to that than just starting up a business. You know, we had to have many ideas and, and strong concepts in order to start off a company. Right. So now let's, let's, just, let's just go through the, the steps. What did you do to prepare yourself to want to get into independent publishing? I mean, what did you... But there's any, was there any research? Was there any um, training? I mean, what, you know, what did you do that led up to this, um, to the day that you created Septicon, the idea? It was extensive research. I can say that much. It was uh, after being a collector for many years. I've seen the market where it's been and how it's going, like the rise and the fall back in the '90s. Right. And you can see how the comics were like such in high demand back when Valiant was publishing, such as reaching comics of over a million copies sold, and then. From that, then coming to back down to late 90s, where 
comics were being sold at like 10,000 copies. There was just a major drop-off. Right. And now it's like, you know, back now in the year 2000 and beyond, we comics have now become a, not a fad like it was in the 90s, but more of like, it's not even collector's item, it's more for it's reading pleasure. Right. And I feel that Something on Studios was created because we want to bring back the art sense into comic books. Because it's, whenever you talk to someone, they always tell you, like, oh, did you read that book? Did you read that book? But they're not really mentioning anything about the artwork of the book. Right. Right. Yeah, well, that's one of the things where, you know, the, the, the cover and the interior pages are the eye candy. Um, but it's up, up to the writer to deliver on that package. You know what I mean? So... I mean, yeah, you walk on, you're walking into a comic store and there's hundreds of books to choose from and all these covers and, you know, you want to make that one cover out to make you catch your attention to walk up to it. Now when you pick it up and you look in the interior, you know, night, sometimes, you know, in today's market, you know, you know, the covers don't look anything like the interior art, but some, if, if it's consistent and you read that first page and the dialogue is strong enough to make you want to take it home, now, when you've read that book, were you fulfilled enough to want to go and pick it up? So it's a twofold. You know, it's the artist doing his job to get you to pick it up, and it's the writer to make you want to collect it. You know what I mean? And get the serial, the, the series. That's correct. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it is a partnership in a sense. Um, but, you know, and back to what you were saying about the early 90s, and I can understand what you mean because, you know, I, I've looked at it, you know, from our point of view. We've yeah. looked at it and we said, you know what? What was it really that contributed to it? And I think the only the, the basic reason was there was an opposition to the big two, and all these new guys were fresh mm. new content, so everybody just flocked to it. Then when it was like just overflowing, so many independents, I think it was this drop, and then you know the, the there was no, I guess that demand wasn't there anymore. So right now, I mean, you're you're looking at thousands and thousands of independents. So now it goes back to my original question. You know, after all of your research, talk, let's talk about your research. What did you do? What were you researching? Did you talk to anybody? Did, you know, what, what were, you, were you looking at statistics? Were you looking at diamond, you know, distribution numbers? You know, what were you doing to, to actually educate yourself on this medium? Well, it's actually educating myself on various patterns that the industry was taking. Right. So, and I felt like when was the right time to launch Septagon Studios? Like, like when was the right time Like where the market needed a new boost? like a new boost of energy, like what is it that the comic book industry is missing? And I figured that, you know what, there is artwork in the industry and most of the main artwork that is actually found in the independent world. So, and I feel there was, when you're looking at the big two and other publishers as well, they always imply these restrictions to creators. So that creators feel under pressure with deadlines and, and restrictions with their art. So I feel that Septicon Studios is a company, freedom of expression, that creators can come in without any limits and they can create a product that they feel that they worked their they worked hard for and that they love what they do. It's based our company's based on passion. Right. So you know, I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate here. You know, passion can only go so far. That's correct. Um, it's a, and there's a lot of capital involved, there's a lot of marketing involved, there's a lot of promotion involved. Are you prepared to accept those, and I say burdens because it is, in the independent world, it is a burden. Are you prepared for what have you done to, to anticipate financial surprises that were not scheduled for, but, you know, in the budget? You know, did you plan ahead to say, you know what, do you have contingency plans? You know, what are you doing, you know, one, to raise the capital, to, to continue, bring that, continue to bring that money in? Um, you know, what, what are you doing to... You know, this is like, you know, you're, you're running for president here. He's like, damn, he's asking me questions. You know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what are you doing to, are you scrutinizing the, 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 the quality of the product that's coming across your, your table? You know, what are those things, what are you doing in those aspects? Well, we're actually looking at, uh, we have, I, I would say to myself, we have a pretty healthy uh, business plan that we planned all uh, before we actually started the company and where we would like the company to go upon our first release and upon many releases to follow so shortly after that. And we believe that in order to... You don't want to flood the market right away because a lot of people, they will not pick up your book because they're like, who is this new independent publisher? What makes me want to buy that book over anything else that's on the shelves right now? So the reason something to do is created to gather an audience first. So 
with our marketing schedule, we like to plan slowly and then gradually increase the number of books. And when we feel we have a strong enough audience that can support our books, we will continue on publishing a little more than we are now. Right. Okay, so now what was what did your research entail as far as when you know what were you, what were you studying and what were you doing? We were studying actually the quality of the books themselves. Mm-hmm. We were looking at uh, you know the various uh, paper quality and the various artwork because most people believe you know quantity does sell, but I don't believe in that. I believe that the, the actually quality of the product will sell for itself. Right. And uh, right, I agree with that. Um, your book, you have a book called Scorn. Correct. Um, what is your your goal for this product? What is your timeline for the release? Um, is this a limited series? Is it is it an ongoing series? Is it a one shot? Multiple questions. <laughs> <laughs> Scorn is actually it's a limited series. It's going to be uh, four issues. Right. And uh, we're release we're releasing it uh, actually on June eighth. Mm-hmm. which is the Paradise Convention Show at uh, Toronto. Uh, pre-orders begin uh, May 14, directly on uh, the Septicon Studios Inc. Uh, website. Okay. Now, I'm going to release a little teaser information here. Is when, uh, when customers pre-order the book, they get to receive a limited edition uh, lithograph absolutely free. Nice. And this is directly through your website? Yes, that's directly through the, through the website. And that's Septicon Studios? Correct. Dot com. Okay, so now... Have you started to solicit to distributors yet? We've actually, we have, uh, I can't divulge any information as of yet, but we have contacted various distributors and various outlets for our book to be distributed in. Right. So now, you're going to release number one. Where, right. are, where are you with the full book series? Um, are they in production? Are you planning on doing this as a quarterly book? Or will you be able to release it Month to month, we're actually playing as a bi-monthly series. Okay, the book, the series is complete. Right, and we want to market each book uh, respectively. Right. So each book gathers its own interest towards the market. Okay, now how many members um, are there uh, in Septicon Studios? Uh, currently, there are three. There's we have uh, the founding members are two members. It's uh, my, me myself and. Uh, uh, my my vice president uh, Philip Defina. He's mm-hmm. actually the art director and uh, vice president. Right. He takes care of all the advertising, all the the artistic side of the company. Okay. We have uh, Chris Hansborough, who's our senior editor. He looks after most of our press release content and our nature of the book's uh, uh, script as well. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about the, the, the production of Scorn. Um, I looked at the book. I love the way it, look, it looks. I love the way it's colored. Um, explain the thought process behind it um, as far as the look and feel. What was the idea behind it? Did you, I mean, did you, did you have the look intentionally or did you, it evolve from the, the script? Scorn was actually a creator-owned uh, creator book. Mm-hmm. It was actually... Uh, we established a bond between us and uh, the writer, Kevin Moyers, uh-huh. and uh, we found uh, his website, Unleashed Productions, is where we made the initial contact, uh-huh. and the book was originally released in a black and white edition, and it was sold at uh, the Chicago, uh, Illinois Convention, mm-hmm. at Wizard World Chicago. Right. It went on to sell over 500 books. And nice. We, pardon? No, I said nice. Yeah. It, it was a great convention hit, and we believe that for it to be colored, we believe that there would be a market for the book itself, and not only in North America, but also overseas, because the artist is from Germany. And mm. Philip S. Neundorf has, uh, has worked on many projects, and he has many galleries uh, in Germany. Nice. So, what it, what, tell us about the concept of the story. You know, what was it about the story that appealed to you? It's a classic revenge story that just got you right there and it just you know what i want to know more about the book so i asked kevin you know let's continue forth with our initial contact and uh he put forth all the four scripts and we just signed the book right away because we felt that you know 
people say, you know what, there's a lot of revenge stories out there, so what makes your book any different? Our book is different in many ways. It's just not your classic revenge story. It's just there's many motives behind the book itself. It's, uh, the book revolves around uh, Michael Riggs. He's 19 years old, and he witnesses, uh, you know, the murder of his best friend. And the gang leader, uh, Toro, is the one who's behind the killing. And this actually bases and reflects the life of Kevin Moyers. Like, he uses a lot of personal information that he puts forth and emotion towards the book itself. All right. I wanted to actually um, allude to that quick. It's fantastic that, and it shows in your work that you research what is basically the traditional um, story plot and that you have a revenge story. What I love is the look. What made you actually take on the look, kind of the art style with the story that you chose? The art style has to set a new boundary for the way comics are being read. And I thought that Philip Nundorf provided this unconventional style that it's not only that the story is jaw-dropping, but the artwork provides the vision that Kevin Moyers had for this revenge story. And the style is completely different than anything currently on the shelves today. All right. So what, are you, what, what is your ultimate vision for this product? The ultimate vision uh, for Scorn is to gather an audience that we feel would see Scorn as, you know, a new, ex- a new reading experience in the comic book world. And we want to bring many visions to other creators and other readers out there to show that we're not providing any restrictions. So when we're doing art, we're not afraid to show complete freedom and complete expression of emotions. Like We're providing creators with complete freedom. They can come in and produce any quality of work, and we want them to use their full potential skills. And you take care of the dirty work. Pardon? And you take care of the dirty work, which is <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all the, the stuff that, that no one really wants to believe has to be done. Um, so are you planning on, I mean... As far as Septicon Studios, what are you planning on limiting the company to comic books or are you planning on branching out into other mediums? We are planning to branch off into other mediums such as graphic novels, uh, uh, clothing. We're hoping to get some games and many other avenues we're planning to achieve, hopefully movie industry as well. So we're planning to hit other avenues with our products. And And... By planning to do so, what do you plan on doing to basically open those doors or expose that product to the people in these other industries? We're planning to market our book as far as we can and not give up. We're planning to market our book to many different companies, many licensing partners as we possibly can trying to establish those important contacts within the industry and with outside the industry as well. Uh, the comic book market may seem so big, but it's yet so competitive. And it's every day that you hear, like, oh, you know, a new publisher has came into the picture. Yes. And we feel that there is a competition, but we feel that Septagon Studios has a chance to provide something new to this competition. And we believe that we can expand the company to further and many outlets, such as we just introduced uh, something called the Imagination uh, Creativity Pad, where people could come onto the site and then enter any thoughts they wish, and they'll get published, sort of like a little letters column inside various selected books that we, we're going to publish. Okay. So now let's talk about the, 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 the company itself. What is your short-term goal and your long-term goal? Our short-term goal... I would say within a five-year span, I can see the company reaching as a, as a top Canadian publisher in the comic book market and as a whole. And I think it's best put by uh, the author, William uh, J. Bryan. He says that uh, destiny is no matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. It's not a thing to be waited for. It's a thing to be achieved. Right. I agree 100%. 
Uh, so now let's go into some of the venues that you plan on attending. Um, what are the shows for 2007 that are you doing? Uh, for 2007, Subject Guns plan uh, to set up at the, the June convention at Paradise Comics. Uh-huh. It's actually located at the Metro Convention Center uh, in Toronto, Ontario. It will be from June 8th to June 10th, and that will be the actual release of Scorn, meaning it will be shipping to stores, shipping to all the customers around the world. Okay. We will also be setting up at uh, the Fan Expo, which is Toronto's largest uh, pop culture event that hosts roughly about 50,000 people, and that will be from August 26th. Fourth to the 26th. Nice. And is that all for 2007? And we're also planning another miniature convention in October yet to be announced. It's actually the Alternative Expo, it's called. It's from uh, Kanzai. Right. Now, what's your plan for 2008? 2008, uh, we're planning to introduce uh, some more new properties. And we don't just plan to publish uh, color uh, projects. We plan to publish some black and white mm -hmm. and introduce uh, new mediums. And in the way which black and white books are being presented, uh, we plan for various books to be published. We have currently some books on the burner. We can't yet divulge any information because contracts are in negotiation. Right. But if any creators out there want to submit any uh, proposals, they can go directly to our website and find our guidelines. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, let me just um, pause for one second. Okay, now, sitting from the chair, from the seat of the guy who's the decision maker rather than the guy who's the creator, mm -hmm. what are the biggest challenges you think or you, you find as, an in the, as a publishing company um, and that you feel that you, you, you have to overcome? And what are the things that are beneficial for you that you are capitalizing on? First and foremost, they're going to have our critics, and everybody has critics, and we believe that the hardest decisions are actually made by the company itself, because the company itself is a critic on its own terms, and we have to face our inner challenges before we can actually face, you know, media challenges and before we face any other criticism outside the company. There's many decisions in terms of marketing strengths and what it takes to market a book, and, and how do you go about marketing, and How's your marketing going to be different from any other publisher? What catches the reader's attention? What gathers their interest towards your product over someone else's product on the shelf? Right. So now let's talk about that because, you know, marketing is a beast in its own. I mean, forget about the fact that you, you want to be you, you're a publisher. And, and, and with a three-man team, there's a lot of things that you have to take into consideration when you're running a company. So let's, let's get into marketing itself. Mm -hmm. what, are, what do you think... As a small press publisher, is your your biggest obstacle as far as marketing? Getting the gaining the interest of readers is the biggest obstacle. It's it's an obstacle in itself because how can you market your book and what makes those readers pick up your book over a Marvel book beside it? Right. So, how do you overcome that? I believe with the release of Scorn, we have overcome many obstacles that went into publishing this book. And I believe the book that we have is a masterpiece, and I believe very well in the book. I believe in its potential. I believe that it can open up many doors for other companies as well as our own company, and we're trying to strive to make a stronger independent market because I believe talent itself is found in the independent industry, and that's where most talent begins its journey into comic books. Right. And, you know, I mean, I say it time and time again, the heart of the industry is independence. Um, that's where the quality is. But aside from releasing the book and aside from attending conventions, what are some of the outlets you're planning on, on hitting or targeting to, uh, to promote the book? We're planning to hit uh, many media outlets, such as we plan on a, like an extensive networking uh, a plan that we plan to pretty much – plug ourselves into every single media outlet uh, there possibly is, such as, you know, the MySpaces, the Ubers, the Verbs, and many affiliated websites we can. It's basically the plug-and-play of the industry that we're aiming, plugging ourselves into many different outlets and playing with those outlets. Right. So now, what 
are the benefits of these outlets? How do you mo- monitor it? How do you know that it's becoming successful for you and it's working for you? First, it would show in the number of sales in the book itself. It would also show in the number of other companies being interested in pursuing different avenues for the property. For example, a company can come into play and say, we want to use your book for a video game property. So many different outlets can open themselves as, you know, Hollywood out- outlets, uh, small screen outlets, video game property outlets, uh, foreign licensing outlets, and we're actually talking to a couple of foreign licensors to get our book abroad as well. Okay. That's cool. So now let's talk about the 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 other side of the business, the the financials, the accounting. You know the the expense control. Um, what are the safety measures in place to account for all that stuff? Because there there is the IRS, and you know as as a uh, publisher, are you a subsidiary? Are you a, a sole proprietor or you're an LLC? Are you a corporation? We are a corporation. Okay, so now as a corporation, you know there's there's some things that you are accountable for. That's correct. And, you know, one thing, some of the things that have destroyed independents who have made a name for themselves, like the crush gens and the chaos, you know, that, you know, and the, uh, the dream wave, you know, made names for themselves. What are you going to do to prevent making the same mistakes that they have? We plan not to flood the market, number one. Um, when you flood a market with uh, publications, many readers and retailers would not pick up a book. So the publishers would actually, in order to compensate for the low retailer order, retail numbers, they'll push out more books so they can gather that other side of the money table. At Subtagon Series, we plan to prevent that by, you know, publishing one book at a time and get, gathering an audience for that one book. When we feel that Subtagon Studios as a company and as well as the readers that we can actually introduce a second title and still gather the same interest and have our our followers with us. All right. So, what are the checks and balances in place to prevent, um, you know, false false communication of funds and, and and the proper distribution of funds and you know those kind of things that have hurt other companies and we've watched them fall like the crush gens who were in debt you know for millions of dollars and you know and were bought out for 1 million you know by Disney what are the what are those those backup plans you know how are you going to prevent that from happening backup plans we have uh, we have some consultants on our side that they can actually guide us in in different avenues that we would not you know go into other routes like other publishers have so we'll take those mistakes accountable for and avoid them. And, you know, if an obstacle does come our way, we plan to break through the obstacle instead of, you know, waiting for something bad to happen. So there's many different avenues and many different uh, outlets. Uh, we are bringing upon ourselves, you know, some accountants or also bring some, as well as some consultants to help us guide us in the direct path. And we feel like with our extensive research that we have done, we are actually going towards a great path, and we're going on, a, on a, an amazing direction. And I feel that the company is ready for anything that it's willing to throw itself at it. Okay, so now for a, a creator or a creators out there listening, and they wanted to pitch a product to you, what's the best route to take, and how do they communicate that communicate to you or get that product to you? We want our creators to be free. We want them to be themselves. Um, that's one thing that we enforce here at Septagon Studios. It's, it's the imagination. We want people to use their imagination to their fullest ability possible. We don't, I'm not saying that we're going to be publishing any superhero books. Like, we don't plan to publish them currently. Right. Because we feel that the market is technically full of superhero books current already out in the market. Right. From the big two and some other publishers as well. We feel that there's more stories to be told outside of that cliche or niche, as you would call it, and there's more stories to be told, and we want creators to submit us, you know, original ideas, um, some amazing artwork we're looking for, because that's 
pretty much we're, we're gearing towards because we want to bring the artistic side of the comic book market back into play. Um, creators, we're looking for a five page, uh, uh, five pages sequential, uh, lettered uh, preferred, as well as color or black and white, depending on the, the nature of the book. We're looking for a cover letter, a synopsis of the series, and something that will grab our attention right off the bat. Right, and it has to be original concept. It's That's correct. That's you're, not, you're, not, you're not looking for an artist. You're not looking for a writer. You're looking for concepts. Concepts. We're looking for full submissions. Right. Right. And now, how would they get that to you? Um, on our website, we have a link. Uh, they can click on proposals that has the entire guideline that we're looking for. They can send it to us by snail mail, or they can send it to us by email. Now, we're preferring that... Uh, Creators outside of the North America territory can submit to us by email at uh, submissions at septagonstudios.com. Right. And for creators inside North America, they can snail mail it to 1597 Wilson Avenue West, P.O. Box 60583, Toronto, Ontario, M3L 2N5, Canada. Outstanding. So now... What advice would you give to twofold? This is a twofold question. Okay. What advice would you give to an aspiring publisher? And what advice would you give to an um, aspiring creator? For creators, we say be imaginative, be creative, be yourself, think outside the box, or better yet, think that that box doesn't exist. Unleash your talent, and the rest would follow. And for publishers? And for publishers, I'd say start off small and think big. Think positive as well, always. You will hit your obstacles as we have. We've had, you know, every publisher has had their problems when starting out. I'm not saying our company was perfect. No company is perfect, and I don't believe in that word. But I feel that if you do come to a roadblock, try and go through that roadblock. Don't go around it. Go through it so you don't have to hit that roadblock again. And all the mistakes that you come across, you'll know to better yourself when you're coming across a new one. So you have the experience that you've gained, and then you can use those experiences to push your product and your company forward. Outstanding. Now, Nick, do you have any final statements you want to share with the listeners? Final remarks, um, I'd say, you know, the industry is, is at a great time high right now, and I feel that uh, it's, not, it's, a, it's an amazing time to get involved. There is competition, and I feel that Septicon Studios is ready for that competition. I feel that Septicon Studios is ready to unleash scorn at the right time, and I feel that the readers would experience a well-read and a well-put book, as well as get their artistic needs that a lot of fans have been craving for. Outstanding. So thank you, Nick, for being on Cast the Craze. Thank, thank you. you very much. Indeed, you're welcome. And, um, you, know, you know, we recommend you do check out the book when it does come out. Um, and when we come back, um, we'll have a wrap-up of this, uh, this interview and the show. Two years after Duty's first trip to Earth. Location, Laboria. Haven to smugglers, heroes, and others. It was amazing. I mean, they unleashed an entire arsenal at me. A futile attempt. You don't say. There was a lone soldier. A soldier? Wow. Uh, Mr. Gorf, I understand you may be a hero in some sectors. Need I remind you, you are in the company of a superior intellect and should never disrupt one while in the midst of a statement. You are correct. I apologize. Please. Continue. Where was I? Oh, yes. There was a lone soldier, outnumbered and surrounded. They came from the air, the sea, the land! To find out what happens next in... Hi, I'm Duty from Uranus. Visit crazycomics.com for all of your duty adventures. All right, we're back. And we're going to continue this, this, this debate um, on um, Cast the Craze. And uh, you know who I am, so don't, don't even bother asking. 
So anyway, as I was saying before, you know, whether it was a little harsh or not, um, what we're talking about is a generalization and an observation of the industry and independence as a whole. And if any independent out there are taking offense or is to this conversation, it's because you've missed something in that realm of that conversation, whether you didn't cover a specific A, B, or C, you shouldn't take offense. You should look at this and say, you know what? Oh, you know what? Damn, you're right. I'm about to go into business with Tommy from down the block, but, you know, is he going to handle the finances or should we go and find account, uh, an, an accountant? You know what I'm saying? You should always keep it outside of the group. If, you, if your forte is not money, don't deal with it. F- pay somebody if Good you have point. to. You know what I'm saying? That is, yeah. You know, if your strong point, point. If, you know, if your strong point is not marketing, don't do it because you're going to screw up everything. You know, if you don't know how to write a press release in the formats, because there's a, there's a rule of writing press releases, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's a specific opening, middle, and ending and how it's supposed to be compiled. You know, if you don't know how to do it, get somebody who does. Or study it and study press releases and how to write it and, and, and look at it because you're basically selling yourself and your company. That's and, a great point. And, and That's words, probably most solid. That's a words go point. a long way. And I always say it's how is what you say Very true. that that stands out. It's the words you choose. So you can have a conversation with an employee who's a poor performer, but they can either walk away feeling empowered and feeling like they, like they have the support of management that's going to help them get to the next level, or they can walk away feeling like they're, they're doing a disservice with the company and, and, and their life has ended. It's what you say to that individual. Do you want to demoralize them or do you want to empower them? The same thing with a press release. You, you're there to sell your company and its product. How are you going to do it? It's the words you choose. You know, it's everything we do. There's a cause and effect. You have to think about that. And you can't be anything. I, that's such a great point, man. Because you can't be anything, I believe, that you're not. In other words, you can't make somebody a great marketer if it's just not in them. Right. It's just not who they are. You know what I'm saying? They may be fantastic with numbers. I mean, I know there's some cats... That they could look at numbers and without even writing them down, figure them out. But, all right, boom. This is the answer. Make him your your accountant. That's his specialty. He could break down numbers like that. But at the same token, he may be so entrenched in knowing how numbers work, he may not be able to engage someone. You don't want him sitting in a boardroom pitching an idea. True that. That's a whole... We're going to wow. pitching ideas, which is a great um, uh, uh, statement you made. But, and I'll say this, and, and you know, you know, you know those cats that go to school, don't know what they want to do in life, so they just take a major. Just because your boy down the block has a, a marketing degree doesn't mean he really understood or took anything away from that, and doesn't mean he knows how to basically deliver. So you have to sit down and be honest with each other. Yo, I just need a degree. I took it. It was a major. It sounded cool, but I, I, I don't like it. I, that's not what I want to do for the company. You have to lay down those ground rules. I mean, I know, I know, and people who went to school to be psychology majors—they're not—they're not practicing psychologists. You know what I'm saying? I know people who have, you know, editorial degrees, and they're doing, and they're working at freaking Best Buy, you know, as a manager. And you know, I mean, you have to understand what you want. I mean, some people just yeah. go to college because one, either they have a they they have a scholarship or. You know, it was free because whatever the case is, or they just needed to go because the parents said, I'll kick you out if you don't go. And they just took anything, but they really didn't know, and they haven't found themselves. And it takes, sometimes it takes people into their 40s until they understand what they want in life. Yeah. You know? So don't, don't assume because somebody has a piece of paper that they are basically professionals in that industry, and they, and they can actually deliver on whatever it is you're expecting them to deliver on. You have to be square in the middle and say, all right, you know what, you're coming to the table and this is, you're saying you want to, do, to handle the marketing for the company. What is your time in action? I mean, what's your what do you plan on doing? Who are you plan on targeting? You know, how are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? What's your timeline? You know, boom, what are the impacts for us? You know, why why you want to target this, this, this community of people? What are they going to do for us? What are the man hours involved? What do we have to do to engage them? All those things you got to think about. And then you need proposals, and you need to sh- see samples of these 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 marketing campaigns. So don't just assume it's that easy. Right. What's your further feedback? 
My further feedback? <laughs> She's like, you know positive. what? I'm just thrown, no, you know what? I'm just thrown for a loop here because, I mean, these are things that, as a creator, you really don't think about. And I'm going to put it out there and say, no, I have not <laughs> thought about all this. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, you know, of course you think about it, which is probably why I haven't made the moves. You know, am I serious enough to really... You know, it's taken me so long. You know, I'm in my <laughs> late 30s. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, people know that already. Come on. Um, so are we. But, you know, yeah. and it's taken me this long to decide, you know, yes, are you going to be serious enough to get into this industry and to make an impact and to, you know, you know, be seen and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, really have the staying power right. to, mm. you know, to last out there. You know, it's really taken me this long because of all these questions that have gone through my head. And it's like, you know, it's, it's just more than putting, inking and putting lines down on paper yeah. and making nutty pictures. What? Yeah. You know what there I mean? Like like Sam said, you got to make sure your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted and that you don't really miss a thing. Or else you're just going to get taken there and, like I said, sweep, swept under the rug and... Everything that you've worked for is going to be down the, you know, and of course you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make, you know, you're going to screw up, but, uh, you know, you got to learn from it. And, right. you know, so really this is like knocking me for a loop right now. So I'm like, Im just taking this all in. So right now I'm gonna be like Ed McMahon and do all the grunts and go, yes. And, mm, and you know, like everybody's saying, you know, yes. so, you know, no. so there are a lot of good points. Yeah, I mean, I think the reason, you know, I've looked and we were talking off the air before and I was saying how I evaluated some of my interviews from 2006. And I felt I was doing a disservice to the listeners because on some I was being so politically correct and so, so supportive of the guest and what they're trying to do that I was not calling out some of the things that I found concerning. That I didn't say, hey, dude, didn't you? And you know, you, do you really want to put people on there? And you want, do you want people to be scared to be on your show? You know, oh, he's gonna ask me those questions. I don't know if I want to go out there. You know, be exposed. This is, I don't want this to be like, you know, the the Howard Stern's where I'm gonna humiliate anybody. What I wanted to do is like engage you and say, you know, pick your brain, have you? And and it's it's okay. I mean, and I'll be the first one to raise my hand, and say some things that you know over the years. You know, there are things I forgot or I didn't realize or I just so we're not all perfect. But, you know, it's an opportunity for you to say, you know what, come clean and say, yo, oh, pff, you know what? I got to go back to the drawing table. Mm -hmm. We all do. You know what I'm saying? Independence. We all do. We have to save our reputation in this industry and how we're going to do it is be prepared. And I think that's the reason why the big two resent the little guy, because we're so overzealous yeah, that's, and that's we're so, yeah. We, we, we're know, we, we, yeah, we're so, we run it. We run, we don't look that we're, we're gonna, we fell right into an empty pool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, you're getting on that diving board and you're jumping. Oh, I just learned how to do a somersault and, boom, and boom, you just hit rock. Well, it's like even kind of as a segue, but you'll look at the great artists in the industry and there'll be some portfolios brought up and you won't understand why the artist will look at the portfolio and kind of just not even answer in some cases, just shake his head and just push it away because. You're looking at it as, oh, you're being a jerk. But he's looking at it as, I worked, I did this for 10, 15 years. I studied this for 20, you know. Mm -hmm. And you're just bringing me something that you just drew a year ago. And you've been doing this, let's say, three, four years. You know what I'm saying? Like, he said, I had to study five, six years to understand the, the dynamics of making a, a fist. Right, and a shortening and, you know... Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. composition and there's all kinds exactly. of Exactly. You know. And he's he's kind of like, "Oh, do you really take what I do serious?" Yeah, but I would tell I, I mean, would that's tell wrong, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, I would tell artists not to go to artists. Yeah. You want your portfolio reviewed, go to an editor. <laughs> because yeah. these are the guys who are going to hire the artists. Yeah. Do not go to an artist because that artist is go, you're you're practically looking to take that that guy's job. So, that's whether good. That's whether a good whether, point. whether they like you or good not, point. they're not going to be honest. Point. You know, you, they're so like that you could be mm -hmm. kick ass, okay? And you know, let's say you're, I'm just gonna throw a name out there, Simone Bianchi, or mm. something. And then you go to you know and he's like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, and he, you know, I, I love this stuff. But anyway, um, you know, and you go to another artist, and okay, you know, if they're good for 
friends or whatever, they're like, this is kick ass. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but there's always going to be somebody out there, no matter how good you are, no ma- ready to shoot you down. Right. Because, yeah. and they know you're the shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Or, yeah. sorry, I cursed. Um, <laughs> good stuff. You can edit or, that if you want. But, no editing. You know that what stays. I mean? And you know, you know, you're, you know, you're hot, you know, they know your hot stuff, but that's the point. They know your hot stuff. Yeah. And they know, oh, sh- you know, oh, snap, if, if, you know, if this guy gets out. Oh, fiddlesticks. Oh, oh, darn. <laughs> you know, he's going to take my job. I better shoot him at it. You right. know, and it's yeah. like all a subconscious thing. It's like, yeah, this is good. This is, you know, this is art. Right. And, but, you know, I think every artist goes through that. Yeah. I right. Think every artist and I see it all the time, and I get, I get pissed off when I see an artist going to another artist, like, dude, you're doing, you're going to hurt yourself in the long run because this guy's not going to tell you the truth. They're always going to find something to say. You need to go study more. You need to go go to an editor. The artists don't. The artists they don't want to tell you the truth, whether or not you know whether you think so or not. Go to an editor, because yeah. that artist is always going to tell you. Always going to find a flaw in your work to demoralize yeah. you and make you walk away unhappy. Right. Go to an editor. He's the guy who has the, the the power to say yes or no. I want you know you work for my company. He's going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and it's going to help you. And Boy, listen, the listen. May feel like. Why do you even, I mean, and this is a wrong attitude, but they may even feel like, what gives you the right to come in doing this only five years and asking me questions, and I've been a professional for this long. It, it isn't just that. that ego thing, too. It isn't just that. Know? An and artist, that's, that's an artist wrong, at a convention is looking to make money, problem. and they don't want to have to stop making money to look at your portfolio, so they're already annoyed that's that you true. stopped. Yeah. Unless, they, true, true. unless they've true, created, yeah. unless it says on the program Portfolio reviews by this artist do not go because you're interfering with that guy's revenue. You're interfering with his connection to his fan base. That's so now point. you're going That's over true. there, That's and he's going to be pissed off that you're there, and he's not going to tell you. He's going to say, six pages, I still don't see feet. Yeah, you, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, yeah. You, know, you don't like to draw hands, you know, or you don't like to draw this. Right. The, 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 the script didn't call for that, but he doesn't know what he's looking at. He's going to find that. And he's gonna say, "This is you. Don't, you suck at this. You know, your eyeballs. You're cross-eyed. You know." He's gonna find that's something. Some don't that's do it. That's like- you know what I'm saying? Go look for where it says there's an editor from this company. Portfolio reviews. If there's no portfolio reviews, don't don't force it on somebody, because and especially. And I'm gonna say this to you guys out there: when you're not prepared, you're never gonna be taken seriously. I hate it, and I I don't look at you know John and you know George. They'll look at portfolios at the table. These guys are the friendliest guys in the world. I won't look at it. They have to convince me that they like it because I won't waste my time. Because nine times out of ten, guys will come over with loose sheets or a a, a notebook with pages falling out. They don't follow it. The, the guidelines are all over the internet. It's all over the. How to draw books the Marvel way. Portfolio, the, the packaging of portfolio is the basic fundamentals. And if you don't know it by now, don't walk into that room. Put it together. You want to see five minimum pages of sequential art. If you're an artist, leave it as pencils. If you want to get a job as a penciler, leave it in pencils. Don't ink something and make excuses for it. Make it sequential. Make sure that we can follow a story without reading dialogue. If you're That's an artist, big, if you yeah, want to be an artist and but you also a talented inker, ink have two separate samples, one in pencil, one in ink. Mm-hmm. If you want to do pencil, you're looking to get a job anyway, whether it's colors, pencil, and ink, then have three separate samples. But don't give one sample from colors and say I'm looking as a penciler. I can't see your pencil because it's diluted in the inks and the colors. I even um, when I was working, that actually has at least a good story that I just thought of with a writer. Um, and Sam was there, who was laughing about it. We were trying to find a writer to work on, let's say, a, a concept that we had. And this gentleman walked up with a script. And I swear, the script had, first thing about it, it wasn't even in a folder. It had, I think Sam remembers who I'm talking about. It wasn't in a folder. Okay. The paper was crumpled. There was food stains on it. <laughs> and the guy walks up and he went to everybody, all the independents, and all of them turned them down. And said, oh, yo, I I don't even know why I'm showing you this because this is so hot, but you should see it. So I'm like, you got to be serious. Okay. So we looked at it, and the first page, I don't know what was happening. It looked like he just drew circle sticks, figures, <laughs> for 10 pages. I said, uh, God, <laughs> you know, because he had to draw an end written. And then he showed, I was, then I handed the art back to him. I said, okay, let me see the script. The script had a five-page synopsis. I said, why do you need to explain 
their story in five pages to me. I don't have five page top. The table is full with people that want to buy. You're blocking up. Yeah, the table. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know. Hey, you know. So then we say, what it's about? He said, it's so hot. No, but I'm going to stop you there because that's uh, that's what I fault you. The moment you open it, you should close it. So you're not ready. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. you know, check out the website. We have an email. If you want to send us a sample an email, we'll contact you after we've reviewed it. But it's, you know, right now it's not in the format it should be in. If you want to know, email me or write to the forum and we'll, I'll, I'll guide you through that. But I, I won't. I just can't. I can't. And I, and I hate and Everyone thinks their thing's the best thing. I, you know, mm. I've seen this one kid. I mean, he was standing there for an hour. He bought every book. So I had to, you know, I said, all right, you know what? I'll look at your, book, your stuff. Because he kept talking about how he's trying to break into the business. How drinking, you know, can you look? I said, all right, let me see it. Mm-hmm. And the, I, I sighed. I opened up. I was like, oh, man. Mm. And, I, and I felt for the guy because I'm like, did he not see what I see? Because sometimes you just can't. You know, I'm like, mm-hmm. when you're walking into a comic shop and you're picking up a professionally packaged book, do you not see what you're missing? Do you not understand what you're missing? Yeah, you have the business game. You know what I'm right saying? It's right the there. Yeah, it's, it's right there. Right. All oh, the no. elements are right there. Yeah. Do you, how do you not see that? And how do you tell that person without them pulling on a shotgun and shooting you, without them stalking, <laughs> you know, following without, you home? Not you, really destroying their spirit, you're Right. Really. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I basically, I always go down to this. All right, look. There's some things that I, I see that need work. Write to me an email, and I'll walk you through it. Some guys have listened, and they've and I've engaged them on the internet, and I've I've recommended books, I've recommended um, you know portals. Some of them never even contact me back. That's fine. If their pride got in the way, not my fault. Yeah, you but can't do nothing. I'm not saying that we're perfect. But you know what? We've done some things to try to prepare our package. When people look at us in an event, they think that, you know, wow, you guys really package your stuff. Really, you know, you guys got a setup. And we're in, in, we're in the artist alley. But we're competing with you. We're competing with the guys sitting next to us. You know what I'm saying? And I think the biggest f- flattery is when, like, people know at conventions what we do. We engage. I'm a hugging kind of guy. I hug everybody. And... I'm always putting my arms around people, and I take pictures. <laughs> nah, you smell. And so I, I, I'm always taking pictures with people, you know, and it's one of those things that I do as, as a thank you. And I, I, you, if you bought a book, I take a picture with you. We put it on the website. You know, we have, you know, fan of the year, fan of the month, whatever. Right. And um, that's what we do. And what I, I see when we're at big events where the, our competitors and the tables next to us they see that magic, and now they start whipping out cameras, and they start doing things that they normally wouldn't do, and they start, you know, and it's, and it's. I'm looking at them like, we can't, you know, do you have to be that blunt about it, that blatant about it? You know, it's like right in my face. You know, what I'm saying you weren't you the past two days, you weren't doing anything. Now you, you know, it's like, but at the same time, like, all right, you know, they looked at it and they said, you know what, it's working for them. Let's let's try to make it work for us. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing when we went to conventions. As a fan. I hate artists that sit there with their heads down drawing all freaking day. Do that at home. All right? Unless you're working on a commission piece, do that at home. You're there at a convention to sell your product and to sell your idea and sell the company. You want to sit down and, and draw? Take a lunch break and leave the building. If you're not doing it for a paying customer, don't do it at all. Mm-hmm. Engage that person that walks by your table. Yeah, I right. hate that crap. It pisses that's, me up. Yeah, that's so right. I look at these things and I don't want to do that. I look at guys that, you know, they have a, perf- a beautiful book. But it's just that person at the table with that book. There, there's no props. There's nothing to promote it. There's nothing to, 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 to catch that person across the room, that, that, that eye. No one can see you or different, so they don't even know who the hell you are. You know. And so there's nothing to cross-promote that product, to exploit that product, because you're, committed, you're, you're, you're competing with dozens and dozens of artists in that room. Yeah. Your book yeah. doesn't even stand out. So all I know is that in order for me to see your book, I have to walk past your table and look down. And but can some, I see you from across the room? Yeah. And some of these independents yeah. that you're, they may not say it, but some of these independents that you're competing with, they do have distribution. They do have some bigger company um, backing them up mm-hmm. with some type of licensing deal. So not only are you sometimes competing with other independents, but sometimes you're competing with other independents who are not telling you they have corporate backing. Maybe not on the largest extent, but some some type of backing. No, I'll give you like uh, the Boondocks. The well, yeah, that's a good. The, we we were in Pittsburgh. Like we're going to Pittsburgh this year. But we were in Pittsburgh two years ago, mm-hmm. and there was a company, the independent guys next to me, and you know the guy 
understood what it meant to market his product. And he invested in, you know, the time to get electricity. You know, he had a, a flat screen TV promoting a trailer for his book. He had the props. He had everything set up nicely. This is a one-man army. And he went out there with a game plan. He says, I'm going to make sure that I stand out in this, this community. So that way people gravitate to that area. Even if they don't buy a book, they walked over. You did your job to get the attention. Now you have to sell it. Mm-hmm. it it's not just getting the attention. It's just like yeah. when, you, when you're when you in a comic store and you see a book, that cover got your attention. Now you open it up. Now the team that put that together has to sell it. Yeah. So you have to deliver. You get them to that table, and now they come over and you stand there. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you know, what are you going to do? Scratch your head and like, oh, um, you know, hey, how are you? How you doing? You know, how do you like the event? Is your first time here? Blah, blah, blah. Engage. 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 Look them in the eye. Talk yeah, to them. that's very important. I, I agree. I agree 100% with that. You know, even if you are doing, I kind of disagree with the artwork thing, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, like doing artwork at the table. But, I mean, if a fan comes up to you or mm-hmm. if somebody comes up to you who really, really loves your work and is sincere about it, stop what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you how are you going to know if you're head down? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah. But, I mean, don't be so damn engaged in what you're doing that you're not paying attention to what's going on around you. But that I happens. think that's possible. It does happen. Oh, no, yeah. I agree. It does happen. If you're Frank Frazetta, uh-huh. draw it to your heart's content. Yeah, that's different. Because you have, yes, okay. yes, well, your stuff's going to sell no matter what. <laughs> right. If you've yeah. built a, a reputation in, in, in this industry and... and, and just your name alone is going to sell that product. Sit down and draw. And when they come up, they're going to engage you. Up. They're going to catch your attention. Mm-hmm. But if you're an unknown, engage. Yeah. Yes. I, I yes, don't care. Yes. You have to hustle. You want to draw. You did all the drawing and all that other stuff at home to put that product together. Now you're at the event. You're there to sell. Mm-hmm. You're not there to draw. You're not there to catch up on your work. You're there to sell. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that, that's why I think it's, you know, and, and I see, see guys on their laptops writing their scripts. I want to oh, no, take. No, I want to take that computer so and crush it. Yeah. You know, I see guys. You know, they're pulling out. That's their, a little much. They're pulling out. They have their table. They have a, a six foot table, but half the table is filled up with with markers and, and, and paper, yeah. and you yeah, can't even yeah. see that product because it's covered, so no one knows what the hell they're doing. You know, what is you know who what is this guy? Yeah. Put that crap away. Sell or don't. You want to you want to draw it? Then you know what? Go to the convention as a spectator. You know, get, go sit down in a panel room and draw all day. You know what I'm saying? Or go meet a bunch of friends and go to a diner and draw. Go to Starbucks. But at the convention, it's the business part. You, The fun part was yeah. putting it all together. You're packaging it. Now you have the property. Make that return on your investment. You know, you pay $300 for that table. Make that sure you're making that so money back. You're not going to make it back with is, your head down. That is so big. And we made that mistake the first three years. Oh, um, first year. Well, two years. I'm sorry. Smack you right now. I will smack <laughs> you. Yes. The and hell's matter with you? <laughs> I have been he's sending the, he's sending the wrong message out there. But no. Nah, we we made that mistake where we were so involved in a product that we didn't look at our net to debt ratio on the cost of the company. So let's say of course um one of the first mistakes we made was we put out how many books? Too it many. How many books? <laughs> a couple thousand. A couple of thousand. No, but wait, and, wait, wait. And right. we we now had trouble trying to get back the return. No, no, we, 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 no. We we, we yeah, it took us a that. year to sell it, but no. Yeah, but so we made you know that's a big mistake. That's your and it happens all the time, and you hear yeah. it all the time with independent. That's why I like I I, I appreciate the um, print on demand option you have now with the smaller printers. Ah, yes. um, but we unfortunately we had no choice because the printer that we found said in order for me to print you have to, and even though we got it in color, you know. We had to do a minimum run. And so we were excited. Like, all right, you know, we're going to sell these books and it's hot. And hot. You know, and we got the fever from the first. We did the first national. And I, I'll tell you that it was a disservice to us because here comes these new guys out of nowhere. We did the Big Apple National, the year end big show for the Big Apple. And we got all the attention at that event. Now, mind you, even Brian Polito came over to our table and said, you guys are hot. You know what I mean? We had the Discovery Channel come up to us and want to know about us. I mean, it was we sold so many books that we thought it was going to be the norm. <laughs> you know what wow. I mean? You know? That and that's what it was. You know, we, we were so excited. We were like, yo, this is going to be like at every convention. And then we start realizing, wait, we're not selling 600 books anymore. We're selling 200. Mm-hmm. And we're selling 100. You know, it's yeah. like, wait. And then, you know, it's like, that don't make sense. You know, it's like, 
we made a thousand dollars at the show. We're not. We're making three hundred dollars now. You know, it's like, what happened? Where that magic go? You know, and I think what happened was just like with everything, and just like the, every you know, Big Apple has a consistent following. Now here comes a group no one's ever heard about, came out of nowhere, and they got color, and they're just these, these these unknown local guys, and they have color, and they, they package it right. They got trading cards, and they got posters. This is hot. I'm gonna, and everyone flocked to it, you know. And but it didn't happen every convention, you know. The reality and that's hit when you start feeling and that's, in and the then, And then it was yeah. just like that's yeah. when the depression yeah. hit, and we yeah. all started drinking and, and shooting <laughs> up, and uh, you know. <laughs> We went through our own I little for such a fun time. Yeah, well, I mean, that, you know, that's where all the turmoil started. It was like, yo, what do you mean? You know how much money I put into this? I'm not going to make that back every time. And um, But, you know, it happens. You know, it's like it's, everything costs. It, 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 there's an expense to everything. Yeah. Buying your dot com, getting that service space, you know, you know, your phone bills, your, your mail outs. You're, you're, you're printing up your posters cards, your, 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 your postcards, your printers, and your, your business cards, the posters, the books, your banners, your tablecloth, you know, the, 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 the actual convention, the travel expense to get to these conventions, the airfare, the hotel, the food, the gas, all this stuff is expense to the company. <laughs> do you realize that? You know, oh, I have to pay for all those things? Yes, you do. Unless you have, unless you're Mike Oming where, you know, they're going to fly you out and pay for your hotel and pay for, you know, for everything. And all you have to do is just be there and you have to worry about nothing else. Dude, wake up. Like, for example, if you're going out, let's say, to San Diego and a trip costs you total, everyone, $4,000 and you don't even have enough books to make back $4,000. The best you'll make back, let's say, is eight hundred dollars on the sale. You already <laughs> lost You're over already a G before yeah. you already hit yeah. San Diego. You already yeah. a G in the hole before you hit San Diego. Yes. And you can sit up and say, "Oh my, no, right, is great." But you have three still G's in the hole. Huh? You, you were in a math major. You have three no, G's I in the hole. <laughs> no, I said at least. See, he always says, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah John, I, thank God you're here." You can hold on. Now. This is Jonathan Syphax Fun Facts. I said, <laughs> <laughs> you're at least a thousand dollars. Did you do that sound? How effect? can you be at least you know, when you're over three? You're thirty two hundred in the hole. At least I mean minimum. Minimum. Oh. Minimum. I just Where's want a mate a sandwich. I'm, I'm not standing for this anymore. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Where's the weapon? Where's the weapon? Oh, this wow. is gonna be fun. This is why Jonathan doesn't handle our finances. <laughs> All right? This is why. Like he's not a numbers person. No, no, he's not. <laughs> I'll cover my bases. At least. He covers your bases. Oh I'll be man! In general. You're killing me. Yeah. You're killing me softly. Um, I get no love. No. I get. No. Thank God there's a lady here. Yeah. To mediate Sam. Uh oh. <laughs> me ain't nothing. Anyway, the 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 whole no, purpose yeah, is done. San Diego home. is yeah. a major expense. It's Word a, up. it's it's we're still planning our presentation for that event. Word we're up. still raising the capital for that. That's another thing. If you are a creator and you know that you have a full-time job, if you don't have daddy's you know, bank account to support you, and you have to pay for everything, and you have a full-time job, and you, you want to publish on the side and eventually make that into a business, you have to think about the cost. We've been planning San Diego for a year, and we're still raising, now, if, if, we're still raising the capital. If you have the talent to do multi-things, like, for instance, I'm going to use myself as an example, I can do so many things in in the graphic industry. I can create websites, I can create animation, I can create business cards, flyers, letterheads, all this stuff, whatever. I can write your proposals, I can help you market your your product, I can create podcasting for your corporation if you want to do internal broadcast to your employees and send messages to them. I can do I'm, I am a service for hire. And that's how I raise revenue for Cast the Craze and for Crazy Comics. And that's where we get our money from. Because we're not getting it from book sales. We're definitely not. Which is why we're trying to branch out into other mediums. That's which is why we which is why we signed with the management company to expose us to Hollywood and all these other corporations to be, to, multi, to basically cross-license our product. But if you are a creator and you're wondering how you're going to make that money, go out there and freelance. Do a website for four hundred dollars you know design somebody's business card for two hundred dollars whatever the case you create letterheads you know what i'm saying you are selling yourself as a business because not just you don't really represent your company you also represent yourself and that's how we raise the capital people say yo yes you all oh, stuff's always so colorful and you guys are everywhere every time i look on the internet you guys are there you know blah blah blah. i picked up wizard magazine you had an advertisement in there i picked up this 
because we're raising revenue to pay for that. I can't. I have a full time job, but I have a mortgage. I have insurance. I have car payments. I have all these other things. That's where my money goes. Now I have to raise money to pay for this. I didn't have a silver spoon. I'm a Puerto Rican from Hollis, Queens. I didn't have, you know what I'm saying? I was one of four kids, a single mother, yes. you know, but I, you know, but I understand the basic fundamentals of life. You know what I'm saying? I don't take no for an answer and I always find a solution. There has to be a solution. Nothing is impossible. There is no wall. You know, you have a wall, you knock it down, you climb over it, you go under it, you do what you got to do, you go through it, but you get past that wall. You know what I'm saying? So you want to make the money, look at yourself. What can I do to make money? Yeah. You know, you have a writing degree. And, and you know what I'm saying? Go and tutor kids in writing who are, who are going to college, who are going to high school. You know, become a tutor. You know what I'm saying? Walk into these high schools and say, you know what, can I you know, put up my, you know, my advertisements or my flyers? They know I, I'm a tutor and I can whatever. You know, don't be a tutor where you have limitations. You know, I can go to you. You know what I'm saying? I tutor. This is my fee. I can go to you and tutor you there. You know, the, these times of the week or so whatever the case is. But you know what I'm saying? You got to open yourself up. You know, know what you're willing to commit to. Understand what your timeline is and work around that. You know what I'm saying? Don't let life dictate you. You dictate it. But if you really are on point with the business aspect, and this may sound far-fetched, but even at independent, you can find a way to have the business pay, pay, pay for itself. There are different avenues through the business. Like, for example, one example you used, which was fantastic, is av advertisement space. You know, set up, let's say, a website get enough listeners or viewers um, but, or a podcast and sell advertisement no, space. Sorry, and let, let, let me get, no, 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 no. You're sending the wrong message. But. Content, quality, content, consistency. You want to do that? You're going to have to put in a year's time, a lot of legwork involved because there are people in the industry who are already there who are doing it and, that's what, and, and the advertisers are committed to these areas because they've built a history. They have a following. So it's not going to happen overnight. You no, can make not, you no. can freelance overnight. That, no. You can freelance overnight. You're not gonna you're not gonna convince Nike to pay for an advertisement on your show when they can go to Howard Stern on Sirius Radio. Well, no, you know I'm no, but like even even, stores, even even you know. the local printer, you know, like local Papadopoulos printing press down yeah. the corner. Why is he gonna print it with you and you just started when they can go to Comic Geek Speak, right. who has the, who have you know several thousand listeners. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, with that said, I mean, right now we're starting to build our revenue base with Cast the Craze, and we're starting to get sponsorship. Why? Because we have we have over a year of experience, we have a loyal fan base, and we have statistics. The, the first thing they asked for, the first thing advertisers asked for was what's your hit, what your, your, your what's your bandwidth, you know, and what are your visits, like what are your daily visits, visits your monthly visits, your, you know, your, your your hits, and we showed a direct pattern of growth from. April last year to April this year. April last year we were at fifty thousand hits. April this year we were at one hundred and fifty thousand hits. You know what I'm saying? So you, we showed a pattern of growth, and we've been on a steady uphill growth. And we we're, we're and it's just not just it isn't just creating a show. It's marketing that show. How are you going to expose it? It's just like with any business. How are you going to expose it? Who are you going to expose it? Expose it to? Are you advertising? You know, right now. You know, we have commercials on two different radio stations that are outside of podcasting, right? Because we have a we have a sponsorship program with these radio stations. We we are available. If you don't want to subscribe to iTunes, you can subscribe to over two do four dozen different streaming audio distribution, video distribution portals on the web. So you don't have to limit yourself to iTunes. You might like Podcast Pickle. You might like you might like audio. You know what I'm saying? You might like video and don't want to download any MP3s. You want to you want movie files. You know, you want to see you want to see actual video. So we have that too. You know what I'm saying? You have to exploit your and you have to be able to have RS feeds. You know what I'm saying? You want you want to be able to have it on mobile phones. People might not want to have an MP3 player, but they have a mobile phone that can they, they want to be downloading on that. You want to be able to make certain that you've done your homework and you've invested the time necessary to expose your product to as many avenues in the industry as possible. Now, would you say these are avenues that people could use where the company itself pays for its, its expenses? Say it again. The company itself pays. For example, you said I had to come out of pocket from my income, mm -hmm. from my job, and pay for this for the company. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is there are avenues, and I'm asking you to recommend After, where the company itself can pay for its expenses. Right, but that's, here that's, that doesn't happen overnight. It's going to wow. take at least at least a minimum of a year. 
At least, unless you have Wendy Williams who says, you know, I'm going to start my own podcast and I'm going to leave the radio stations. She's definitely going to draw investors because she has a history and she has a following. So you have a name behind it, instant. You're an unknown guy that says, I'm going to buy the equipment and I'm going to do this. And I want, if your whole, see, that's where you send the wrong message. If your whole purpose of creating a podcast show is to get investors to pay for this and so that way you can make money off of this, don't do it. Don't do it. You have to be doing this because there's a reason why. There's a message you want to send. You know, there's a purpose for it. You know, Cast a Craze was created for the independents. I support independents all across the, the board. From gaming to music to movies to comics. If you're an independent creator, independent thinker, and you're doing things to 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 better the industry, and you're, you're following your passion, and you're doing something that you believe in, we want you on the show. The Joe Casadas is no longer independent. He's mainstream. You know, he has that foundation. He's built that platform. He can do no wrong. It's the guy who's trying to get that voice, the, the, the guy who's trying to be the next Joe Casada, who might eventually wind up working for a corporation, but as he's starting out, he's, he's creating that road, and he's following that path that, that's set for him, and he has to make the decision, do I go left, right, or straight? What if that's I'm the guy not, that we want to talk to. What if I'm that individual, and I'm kind of playing devil's advocate because... I'm sure there's some independents that run into this. What am I? I'm that individual that I do not have the revenue to pay for a trip to get out to San Diego where the venture is. Or the only money I have is to pay for a publication of the book. That, or I have to ha form some revenue within the company because I don't have the money to pay for the book. Then you do the as break. many local shows as possible to raise the revenue. Or you sell yourself as a as a creator of whatever medium that you feel that you're an expert in, and you sell yourself and you try to build the revenue. See, that's you know that's what, what I think people need to hear because right. there's a lot Which of cats. Is, they don't have, like you said, right? They don't have the money to, in some cases, even pay for a production. Hey, for when we're in San Diego, you know right, San Diego, we, for us, we make enough for to pay the table. And pay for possibly the adver advertisement is expensive, so we pay, we pay for the table and the advertisement, but it still doesn't cover hotels and airfare. Right. So we we pay, we pay at least we make at least that much. And it's funny, I had a conversation with an executive once, um, who's in the industry, uh, and his 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 sole purpose, his whole function is management, and we we're talking about numbers. He said, "So how did you guys do?" I said, "Well, we, we printed about two hundred of every book, and we sold out of four titles." Um, and whatever he goes, huh? He goes, that's that, that. I guess that's good for you. I go, what do you mean? He goes, oh well, um, Dark Horse they sold forty thousand titles <laughs> at the convention. Well, <laughs> forty thousand titles Dark at a convention. Horse. He goes, you know, uh, um, at a convention over five days. Now, mind you, it's an event that brings in one hundred twenty thousand people. Mm -hmm. So you know, and that's not one person. It could be one person buying five books, another person buying six. But they sold forty thousand, whatever the units are, whatever. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said, that's amazing. That means they have a team there hustling. You know, they have the names behind it signing. They have all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. But for an independent, for us, that's astronomical what we were able to accomplish, considering that we don't have that capital to expose. But, you know, and he was, you know, he said, I guess in your, if you equate the two, yours is, you know, it is good for you or whatever the case is. I'm like, all right. You know, I said, yeah, thanks for making me feel bad. But, <laughs> but I said, you know, I said, real, yeah, I said, yeah, you know, being honest with I you. said, you know, I said, wow. Yeah. I said, but you know, it is also a business. But you know, they're not there to lose money; they're there to make money. Right. Um, and nobody is, and nobody wants to lose money, you know. But you think about San Diego as a way to expose yourself to a bigger audience, because the, pos the chances of you getting exposed on television are good at San Diego. Yeah. Uh, uh, of a network executive walking over to your table are great. I mean, we've met with so many executives, you know, at San Diego. Um, you know, you, your, your 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 product being exposed to a bigger market is so damn better at San Diego than any other convention and so you want to be out of San Diego and if you can't afford San Diego in August don't do any good shows save all your money for that show if you want to ex try to expose it to different markets and but when you're there you just can't expo assume that by sitting at the table that's going to come to you you got to go and hustle which means is print up five ten thousand postcards you know what I'm saying have somebody handing out those postcards 
you know, walk around the place, you know, cross market, find out who the executives are, find out where the lectures are. And at the end of those lectures, you know, walk up to these guest speakers, whoever it is that you're trying to target and ask them for information. See if you can give them a sample. If they're not willing to take it with them there, can you have it delivered to the, you know, into their office? So whatever the case is, make those connections. Make sure you have your business cards there. Make sure you have a press kit. Do you know what a press kit is? I'm going to end with that. Do you freaking know what a press kit is? Because I don't think you do. Because we were in Chicago. <laughs> you think you know, but you have no idea. We this were in Chicago from, at the Comic-Con. And we had a news crew walking around the entire event. And they said, nobody knows what a press kit is? And bam, I pulled it out. I said, I have one. Really? And we got an article. Because we were prepared. And we went over to Marvel. Marvel didn't have a press kit. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? So they came over to us. I knew what I needed to get the job done. So why don't you educate us? No, we're going to cut. And when we come back, we're going to talk about press kits. Do you Edumicata. actually know what it is? Yeah. Do you know what that is, you sucker? <laughs> you are getting us in full throttle. You are getting Sammy in, in full glory today, boy. Uh. Yeah. Cause you know I got so The neighbors cast a craze, baby So act like you know what's called Cast the craze Cast the craze The one originator The crazy creator Giving you a fever with my poor dream of Medina Weekly all the time With the newest and the best Independence from the north The southeast the west You got to SSS And the devils that are silent Kiss me Cause it ain't all about violence Neat stuff collects in the brothers, the tables Crazy comics in the house are willing and able The underground sounds from hip-hop to rock Jamming on the saxophones is my boy Philip Clark Cause I'm um, my keeps it going Cause you know I got to flow The name is Uncle Sam Like, like you know, act like you know Yes, crazy Yes, crazy Now, baby, Just spread the word. Have you heard? <laughs> <laughs>